Big development here at Kentucky Speedway in the Indy 300. Will Power with a collision of Amanda Beatrice on pit lane. And they are still working on Will Power's car there on the left side pod. Trying to tape it up. He's dropped all the way back to at least 20th position. Let's show you what happened earlier. And as Will Power is coming in, he obviously is going to be making a line like so into his pit. All right, Anna Beatrice at this point, their team, she's located right here. They need to see that Will Power is coming and they need to not send her. And as you see, he's giving a wide berth so that there's plenty of room to get in, but this is just bad timing. That was not the right call. Unfortunately, by Dreyer and Reinbold, you cannot fault Will Power for that one. You come in at the speed limit, you swing as wide as you can, and then hit your pits. Just an innocent victim, unfortunately, being in the middle of the pits. the tape that they have tried to use to make repairs just didn't hold it just flew off the side pod and Anna Beatrice has come in looks like we had somebody hit Kevin Simona Di Silvestro was coming down pit road lost control spun and took out one of her crew guys he did get up though the crewman has gotten up two tires have been vaulted into the infield. She's made contact with the inside retaining wall in pit road. So we'll have to take a look at this, but I don't think anybody's hurt severely, but that was scary. The car was still rolling and it hit one of her crewmen. Here's a look at the replay. Simona Di Silvestro coming down pit road. Jan, I'll let you talk over it as you see it from up top. Wow. Now remember that Dan Weldon was on pit road when this happened, and if everyone else pits, he will go to the lead. Well-timed pit stop for Dan Weldon. Here it is again. She had been in the pits. She was leaving on cold tires. And that's obviously KB Racing most likely EJ Viso's crew. Well, if everyone pits ahead of Weldon, he will go to the lead. Now, it takes everyone ahead of you to pit for this to work. Yeah, and hopefully he shot. was close enough not to lose a lap. If he lost a lap while well on, you pit on green, then it could be a problem, don't you think, Ian? Well, in any case, pits are open and pit stops are happening. Lindy. Marco Andretti, no changes for him, was passed in the test, but he says this is where it matters. He is out in 8.4. Scott Dixon, bottom of your screen, he said his car is pushy into the corner. When he comes oh off, he wants my. to snap loose. Another problem on pit lane, Marty. Problem. Oh, another problem on pit road. Marco has a problem on pit road. He runs into a car, guys, for the Ganassi guys. Clean pit stop. Dario Franchitti wins the race off pit road, but Kevin, a mess in front of you. It's EJ Viso, Marco Andretti, and Alex Lloyd all coming in. I didn't see what started this one. They're turning Viso around. By the way, I'm still working on a crewman. It was from Viso's crew, as Jan mentioned. He's up and he's okay. He may have some minor injuries, but nothing really bad at this point, to the point where he's up and around, and he's still trying to help his team. The crewman is from Viso's team, so we'll assess the damage here with these three cars, and there's a puncture in the side pod of Alex Lloyd's car, a significant puncture. They're gonna shut that engine off, and they're pushing Marco Andretti back now. Here's the Sunoco race off pit lane as Graham Rahal gains three, Serbia up five, Briscoe up six. The big loser in that was Ed Carpenter, who lost four positions. Sunoco, proud manufacturer of ethanol. Boy, you, you just saw this coming with Marco Andretti. Three, two, As we watch oh. J.R. Hildebrand. Man, <laughs> what is going on? It's safer out of 220 miles per hour than it is on a pit lane. Man, wow. And that was not cold tires. Now here is the Marco situation. Three wide here, make that four. I, I don't understand any of that. Yeah, you. Kevin, yeah, the other incident was with J.R. Hildebrand's team. It is Eric Scheiman, the inside rear tire changer. He is awake and alert, and you see them working on him now, getting ready to take him to the infield care center. I can tell you he is in considerable pain, however, and it is his left leg. You see them immobilizing that right now in an effort to transport him to the infield care center and possibly a local hospital as well. Lindy? Marco, where 
where do you think the confusion was in that? They were coming in, I was going out. Um, but, you know, my dad pointed out to me, he's probably right, that it was my fault because I bogged coming out of the pit box. And so that allowed Ray Hall to be next to me. Welcome back to Kentucky Speedway Lap 163, a race where we have had a lot of incidents in pit lane. One of those with Simona De Silvestro. I have Simona here with me. What can you tell me? Yeah, we don't know. We, we pit it and we had fuel pressure issues. And, and then the engine wasn't firing up well. And when I took off, you know, it just uh, all of a sudden went crazy. And I really have to apologize for the for the KV guys because that was that was pretty bad. But you know, you're seeing it for the I first know, time. I know it's pretty bad. Like, I'm really sorry. I, I really don't know what happens, but you know it is what it is. And we had a pretty good race going. though. I think confidence was coming up, and uh, just have to uh, go to the next one and uh, you know have to take nuclear clean energy and energy for uh, for the, all the effort this year. But yeah, I'm really sorry for the uh, KV crew. How does something like that affect your confidence? Well, it's not really anything you can do about it, you know. It just, uh, you know, when your car all of a sudden goes full throttle and you're on the speed limiter and it just keeps going, uh, you know, it's a bit crazy. So, I don't know. It's nothing I could have done differently. So, uh, it is what it is. You know, we'll see what happens. Thanks, Simona. We have a crash. Anna Beatrice, Bob. Anna Beatrice in the wall. Bringing out... Right, guys. You okay, Be up. Another caution. Which is why you never give up a position. Be a copy. You okay? Because now they may be good to go because it's going to take a while. In there, the Looked like a big hit for Anna. The Homotro safety team quickly to the scene of the crash. Was Dan Weldon was in the frame, certainly low. gets up under the front end of the car. Here's another angle. This is from J.R. Hildebrand's perspective. Uh, okay, so no, Dan was not involved. Yeah, he she was, was sideways. Goes, uh, Pits are open. Pits are open. We pit off of four. Annie getting some assistance from uh, the doctors as she gets into the Phillips emergency vehicle to take a ride to the infield care center to see if she will require further medical attention at some other location. Wade Cunningham is having a great race. He is running in sixth spot right now. A tip of the hat to Wade Cunningham for a great race here this afternoon. And that guy, you know, Carpenter kept Dario down coming off a four. And did you see how much he had getting off of four? If he can keep squeezing Dario down, it's going to be tough for Dario to beat him to the start finish line. I think the only chance that Dario has is on the last lap going into three and four. He has to crank some weight jacker to the left, free up the car for the inside. If not, he won't make it. And maybe just a little, a little move over to Carpenter, you know, just to try to break the. Less than three wow. miles of racing continue. We shouldn't count him out just yet. <laughs> yeah. Serbia is trying to join his teammate, Hinchcliffe. All right, white flag here. All right, one more lap to go. Carpenter led that lap. It, buddy. You can do this. Now watch Scott Dixon as he's going to take a look to the outside. Now, Frank Keeney's out of out of push to passes and Carpenter has one left. Oh, that could be the difference. They go down the back stretch and race into turn number three. Will Ed Carpenter be able to get his first win in the eyes on IndyCar Series? Here they come to the line and it is Carpenter. Ed Carpenter wins. How about that? That was good stuff. He finally does it. Second place the last two years. And Ed Carpenter gets the victory. Oh, man, what a finish. <laughs> As Ed Carpenter continues to celebrate, talking with members of the media for his first win 
of his IndyCar career. Let's take a look at the uh, finish of the race. James Hinchcliffe that we just talked to, he finishes fourth. That equals his best finish at Long Beach and Loudoun. And he also now leads Rookie of the Year points by six over Hildebrand. And Wade Cunningham, who finished seventh, also had his career best finish. Danica Patrick came home in 10th position. There were 19 cars on the lead lap when the checkered flag fell. Will Power, who had the problem earlier on pit lane, was the last car on the lead lap. One race to go, Jan, and it really is hard to believe that we have seen such a huge point swing this weekend. With Will coming into the race 12 ahead, he leaves 18 behind. Yes, that makes Wally and I look like a couple of dummies, doesn't it? Because <laughs> I certainly thought that it was going to be momentum was going to be what you wanted. But Dario, you know, I guess you can't mess with the stats. He delivered. Nobody moved in the top six except the first two. Ryan Hunter Ray gained a spot, moving to seven. And Danica Patrick gets into the top ten, moving up two positions in the points. It should be quite a finale in two weeks in Las Vegas for the World Championship. If you don't make it to the race, you can catch it live on Sunday, October 16th at 3 o'clock Eastern on ABC. This marks the end of our third season of coverage here on Versus. Before we sign off, we want to acknowledge the men and women behind the scenes and thank them for their dedication and passion to the sport that we all love, the IZOD IndyCar Series.